All right, welcome to a video lesson here on properties of trigonometric functions. I'm going to be digging further into the properties of sine and cos as functions that I introduced in a previous video lesson here. Uh, so the first thing I want to mention is that sine and cos are part of a family of functions that are referred to as periodic functions. So a function is considered periodic if it has a pattern of y values that repeat at regular intervals. So we saw that when we graphed sine and cos that we have this sort of repeating pattern as we move from left to right and that happens for the graph of cos as well. Sometimes sine and cos are referred to as sinusoidal functions. A sinusoidal also means periodic, any function that repeats in a, in a regular interval. Okay, a term that we use to describe periodic functions is a cycle. This is one complete pattern. So you can see on this graph here, this red portion, this is one complete pattern before the, before the pattern starts over again. Okay, you can see I've got another one here. Uh, starting at 10 and I finish at 14. As long as you can pick out uh, one complete pattern, that's considered a cycle. Okay, a period is the, this is what we call the horizontal length of one cycle. So if you if you move from one to one to five here, that's the length horizontally, so we call that the period. Okay, an amplitude, this is half the difference between the max and min value. Uh, you could represent this uh, mathematically as max minus min over two. Calculate the amplitude just really quickly for this graph. Our max value is two, our min value appears to be negative one. So two minus negative one would be three. So three over two would be our amplitude, so 1.5. So if you just picture for a moment, if I, if I, let's say I, I'm looking at this 0.5 point right here, if I just draw a, a horizontal line, there's a distance of 1.5 units from this horizontal line to the max, as well as from the horizontal line to the minimum. So, uh, so this, this horizontal line sometimes is referred to as the equilibrium point, uh, and you, might, you may hear that moving on into your studies of periodic functions. All right, so let's look specifically at the graph of y equals sine x. I developed this in a previous video lesson using the unit circle. Uh, essentially what I've done is I've taken these, these values of, of theta and I've substituted them in for theta in the, in the equation y equals sine of theta and I've got y values out. I've graphed this nice function. Uh, this is definitely a periodic function. You can see it definitely goes through one complete cycle in 360 degrees before it starts repeating. That's where we get this period from. Remember the horizontal distance uh, between uh, in the time it takes to go through one full cycle, that's your period. You can see the amplitude, we've got the max of one, the min of one, we've got a distance of one from the equilibrium point to the max and the min, so that's where we get our amplitude from. We discussed the domain and range in the previous video lesson, but just remember you can substitute any angle into, into theta and you'll get any, any y value out possible, except our y values have to be in between negative one and one. You can see on the graph here that I definitely don't have any y values above one and I definitely do not have any y values below negative one. So that's the graph of sine x. Okay, again, looking at cos x, just talking about these new properties of period and amplitude, you can see at any point, if I pick out any point here, for instance, when I start at zero one here, it takes 360 degrees for this thing to go through one full cycle. That's where we get the period from. The period's 360 degrees. Likewise, the amplitude is one, right? We've got a distance of one unit from our max and our min to that equilibrium point. Uh, so we say our amplitude is one. Domain and range are the same here. You can substitute any x value in uh, as long as, um, sorry, any x value goes into this function. You just, you can't get y values outside that range of one and negative one. Okay, one of the other things I talked about in the last video lesson was that these graphs are really the same, except if I take sine x and I shift it to the left by 90 degrees, take each one of these points and move to the left by 90 degrees, you get cos. Likewise, if I, t if I get cos and I add 90 degrees to each of these points, you'll see that I end up with the sine function. That's going to be something that we're going to discuss later on once we start looking at transformations. So stay tuned for that video lesson. In the meantime, uh, let's just look at some examples here. And I just want to classify these functions as periodic or not. And if they are, we're going to try to state the, the period and the amplitude. This first one here uh, definitely looks to be periodic. If I picture, if I just pick a random point, for instance, uh, well, let's let's pick this point right here, zero. What looks like to to be zero comma 0.5. It takes approximately, uh, let's say, uh, let's see, we'll say this is what five six, approximately six and a half 
to go through one full cycle and then we start repeating again. So this would definitely be considered a periodic function. Uh, we've got a period of, a boy, of about six and a half. Sorry, I should have chosen a better graph with an easier to understand axis. But you can see that this is definitely periodic. It continues to repeat in regular intervals. Whereas this graph here definitely is not periodic. Okay, the, there's not a regular pattern in my y, my y, uh, my, my y values as I move from left to right. So I'm going to say this is not periodic. Okay, last one here. Definitely another periodic function. If I start at zero here, zero, zero, it appears to be going through one full cycle in about six and a quarter. Okay, so there's definitely a repeating pattern of y values there. So that would be the period. Also, we we're, were supposed to state the amplitude. Sorry, I'm not reading the question. Amplitude appears to be one in this case, the distance from the max to the equilibrium point and the min to the equilibrium point, or max minus min divided by two. Our amplitude is tough to tell in this graph because again, I chose a horrible graph, but it looks to be about 1.5 from the central axis or the equilibrium point to uh, to one to the top, the max or, or the or the min, likewise. Okay, so a, an amplitude of 1.5. All right, so just a little uh, problem here. I just want to go over. This is one of my favorites to put on tests and quizzes. Uh, so you're, you're given the graph of a function here. It says if f at x, that's this function being graphed, is periodic. So we know this thing is periodic, and you can kind of see that it is, in fact. And we know that if we were to substitute 2 into this function, we would get 6. What do you expect f at 16 to be? So th this is really a great question because it, you know, it, it challenges you to think about what periodic means. Well, we know that periodic means this thing goes through one full cycle in some number of, uh, some number of units. Uh, so let's, let's, what we're going to do is we're going to pick out the, the period here just by looking at this graph. So what I've done is I've highlighted this point here, f, f at 2 equals 6. And I want to see how long it takes before I get another value of 6. So I've got this other little marker. As it turns out, it's this point right here. You can see these two points are identical. They have the same value of 6. Okay, this point here would also have a value of 6, but I haven't quite gone through one full cycle if I put my point there. So I'm going to I'm going to choose this point here. You can see I've gone through one full cycle and then I start repeating. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate the horizontal distance that it took for that to happen. Okay, so I started at 2 and I finished at 9. So that must mean that my period is 7. It took me 7 units to go through one full cycle. Well, if 7 is my period, I could add 7 to my initial value of 2 and say f at 9 is also 6. Okay, so that's what I've done here. I've shown you that if I substitute 9, I get 6. Well, from that, we can conclude that if we add another 7 to 9, we would get 16. We'd get the value of the function at 16. That's what we're looking for here. We're we want to find out what we would expect our function at 16 to be. Well, we can expect the value of our function at 16 to be 6 based on the fact that this function is, in fact, periodic. Great question, great test or quiz question. So if you're one of my uh, students, you know, there's a little hint there for you. All right, so that's the end of this video tutorial on properties of trig functions. Really brief, I just wanted to introduce those terms, uh, cycle, period, amplitude, periodic function. Uh, these are things that you're going to be using, uh, especially as we move on and start looking at transformations of trig functions.